Good morning, gorgeous women. I am super excited to be here with you live this morning uh, to dive into all things journaling. So, as the Wheel of Doom does its thing, I'll pause and then I'll start afresh. Ready? Three, two, one. Good morning. Welcome. I am super excited to be diving into all things journaling with you really to help you build your own journaling practice that is not about the shoulds, not about being busy, not about uh, putting yourself in a box, but instead creating a practice that firstly feels absolutely fantastic for you and secondly actually gets results because what is the point of journaling if it doesn't actually move you forwards, if it doesn't release the old so that you have space to call in the new. So if you're here with me live, um, say good morning. It's always lovely to see who's here. And my first question for you before I even begin is, do you already have a journaling practice? That's question one. Pop your answer in. If you have, you could always give me a little smiley emoji. Uh, if you haven't, you could give me a crying emoji if you want to. I don't mind, but that would really be useful so I can see where you're all at. Now, I've got a number of things that I want to talk through this morning with you in terms of journaling because I really am super passionate about journaling. If you have been in this community for a long time, you'll know that journaling is one of the things I talk about quite a lot. It certainly created huge results and really helped shift me at a time in my life when I was feeling like everything was really difficult and I was stuck and it helped me transform my business, transform my mindset and actually then start getting the results that I needed to and really truly desired in my business. However, I also think that quite often people can put pressure on themselves to journal because maybe they hear the hype about it, maybe they hear, you know, different successful people saying, like, if, if you want to be successful, you need to journal. And I think that potentially you can then, from that place, just put pressure on yourself. And we all know that pressure is not the way forwards. So, Today I want to talk about the things that do not support your journaling practice so that we can get rid of those. I want to talk about the two different ways essentially to journal, the different focuses that you're coming from. I want to talk about why journaling is so freaking amazing and I'm so passionate about it and how you can feel just as passionate about it yourself and use it as a real, um, a, a real tool that creates leverage to you gaining the results that you want to in your business. Right, let me just see what uh, comments you put in. Uh, good morning, Holly. Good morning, Janine. Um, yes, you use journaling. Awesome to hear. Yvonne, beautiful to see you. Good morning. You've been saying you'd like to start one for ages, but you haven't got practice. Okay, that's awesome to hear. I'm sure you're not alone on that, um, Yvonne. Kirsty, no, you find it very hard to get started. Yeah, absolutely understand that. Uh, I just switch off when you hear the word journaling. Um, I bet there's a few people who are in the same camp as you, Kirsty. so do not worry. And let's see if we can turn that around for good. The thing is though, Kirsty, I wonder, you're here, right? So you can't turn off fully when you hear people talk about the word journaling. So somewhere there must be a little seed that says, hmm, what is this about? Can I make it work for me? Everyone raves and rants about it. Like, what's that about? Let me discover a little bit more. Or maybe you just here because you've got nothing better to do maybe but I think it's because there's a little kernel of seed in there um Tammy good morning gorgeous Faye good morning so firstly I think that journaling is sometimes misunderstood and when it's misunderstood that's when you potentially potentially using it in a way that just adds it as another task on your to-do list and I think we're all the same in that we're busy, right? We're juggling lots of balls. Like we are all kind of living life um, at 100 miles an hour, which for me, I find very exciting. I love going fast. I love juggling the balls. I love doing all the things, um, but we are busy. So we don't want at any point just things that make us busier that don't actually move us towards the results that we want or don't help us step into that place of actually feeling really good. And journaling for me, it's about two things. One, helping us shift to a place that feels really good. So if we're having one of those days where we wake up, maybe you're feeling a bit anxious, maybe things aren't working, maybe you feel like you're pushing and going nowhere, that whole like pushing the boulder up the hill kind of feeling, journaling can shift that. 
and I'm going to talk about what specific kind of journaling will shift that. Um, but also, so, so, so journaling can create that feel good factor by releasing negative emotions and stepping us back into our power. But here, one of the, here's where people make a mistake with journaling because they will sometimes journal their way through those negative feelings, but then they leave it there. And what that means is, um, a, a coach that I work with, oh my God, it must've been about 13 years ago now, um, talked about it being in the pit. Um, it, it means that if you just journal on the feelings that you're feeling, you end up at the bottom of the pit. And so you stay at the bottom of the pit all day. And the bottom of the pit is a place where you're feeling all the emotions and they're all rolling around inside of you and you don't actually shift it. And the thing about journaling is that it's supposed to shift those emotions so that you can start feeling good, so that you can start taking those actions and really so that you can shift to that place where the possibility and the po and the potential is huge we want journaling to expand how you're currently feeling to help you step into the version of you that knows you can create anything and everything that you want in your life and your business right let me have another quick look at a couple of the comments that have come through um glennie good morning gorgeous you struggle with it as you think it's more like a diary yes that's one of the things i was going to mention actually um that's one of the reasons that i really struggled with it so I began journaling, I think about six-ish years ago in my business. And I had heard about journaling before that many, many times. But I did not begin journaling for that exact reason, Glennie. For me, it felt like journaling was a little bit like keeping a diary. And I think that as kids, we're either like that kid that loves keeping a diary and has this beautiful thing with his, all its daily comments, or we're not. <laughs> and I was not. I was a crazy creative kid who did not want to sit down and write out what her day had been like every single day, even though I would look at friends and, and sometimes maybe feel a little bit jealous because they'd got these epic diaries, but I never did. Um, so journaling, uh, diary, using a diary, keeping a diary, not a diary like your dates, but a diary of this is what happened to me today, has never felt very fun. I'm like, that's already happened. Let's move into what's happening. And that's the difference with journaling. Journaling isn't really about what's already happened. Journaling is about creating the future that you want. Because at its very core, journaling is about calling in a new identity. It's about you shifting your beliefs. It's about you letting go of that pile of blocks, beliefs, stories that hold you back from your bigger potential. It's about finally releasing that and embracing the possibility instead. Because when we change our identity, when we change our beliefs, then we create a new reality for ourselves. Are you with me? Are you following? Does that make sense? So the reason essentially that we use journaling is to step into a new reality. It's to get the results that we want. It's to actually change our identity. It's to change our beliefs. It's to change ourselves at our core, not from that place of I need to be a different person, but from that place of actually releasing all of the learnt behaviour, beliefs and stories that we've collected through our lives that society has um, told us and blanketed around us our entire lives and instead step into a new reality, into a new potential, step into a place where actually we see the possibility. And that's what you need to do to start getting different results in your life. So if right now, you're in that place in your business where you feel like you're doing all of the things, where you feel like you're really busy, where you feel like, when is this finally going to change? Part of the reason that you're experiencing that is because it's part of your identity. It means that somewhere in your subconscious, you've got beliefs around making X amount money of money is going to be hard. Or, um, you know, you've got to, you've got to be working 50 hour weeks in order to receive the kind of income that you want or having your own business is difficult or it might be things around um, 
you not seeing the value within yourself. It might be those whole like, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. Uh, that's okay for those people, but that's not okay for me. So journaling is, a, is one of the ways that we can start shifting and changing all of this and putting you in a place where you actually really start to see the world through different eyes. Instead of waking up in the morning and seeing that kind of glass half empty, you see the glass half full. And I part of me jokes a little bit about that, but actually I was the person who saw the glass half empty. I was a person who would naturally, because of my identity and how I'd been how I'd been brought up and uh, just kind of the worldviews around me, uh, coming from that place of you've got to be careful in life, you don't get anything for free, uh, you have to work really hard, um, nothing is what it seems, if someone's being generous there must be a catch, like I had all of these beliefs and so I literally was looking at the world from a, from a um, cup half empty perspective. And I realized that that was not serving me because I realized I didn't believe in the possibility. I actually, every single step of the way was like, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just do a little bit. I'll just try a little bit because what if I fail? And it's not really possible to achieve that for myself anyway. Those people doing those kind of things, clearly they've got something else going on. They know some secret, there's something else. And so it, those beliefs and that glass half empty kept me stuck for a long time. And it was only when I started noticing those because to begin with I didn't I wasn't even aware of them right it was only when I started noticing those and then purposefully changing those with a journaling practice that the results that I was getting started to change so hang on I've got things popping up on my uh, computer let me have a look at the comments I think I'm gonna have to open my door because I'm like I start talking and I get everything gets all hot so hang on um Hopefully we won't hear too many, well, the birds sing, that's not a bad thing, is it? Okay, so you struggle with justifying uh, spending time on it. Yes, Louise, I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, Amy, you struggle with journaling. I've never been one for writing in a diary or a journal. Okay, I'm going to talk about some things that are going to help you as well, Amy. Um, Janine, hell yes. Uh, yeah, makes perfect sense, Kate. Uh, good morning. Okay, those of you hopping on, good morning. It's lovely to see you all. Okay. Tara, what was the shift that made you realize that you were half and half empty girl? Uh, what was the thing that you made you notice? I, I think it was through coaching, it was through journaling, it was from reading personal development books and through and through conversations. Like I started to catch myself. I would realize that um, I would say, well, it can't be that good. Or I would say, I can't afford it. Or I, I had a lot of I can'ts coming out of my mouth a lot. And so it was simply a process of becoming more aware of it. And the more aware of it I became, I started to realize like, oh my goodness, like I'm that half empty person. I'm not a half full person. Um, I'm the person who always looks at what might go wrong rather than what might go right. Um, and I had to shift that. I had to change that. Um, because if you're in that place, you are always pushing a big rock uphill. So firstly, journaling quite often misunderstood which is why people might use it but not get the results that they want they use it to journal on how they're feeling but not change that at the end and that's the essential part journaling can be a brilliant tool to become more aware of your feelings and why you're feeling that however we cannot stay there if you stay there you're literally staying in the bottom of the pit where you're going to probably feel a bit crappy and rubbish and like um be like rolling around in those feelings all day versus we need to pull you up we need to pull you up outside the pit we what we need to um do that transition from the this is how i'm feeling and this is what's going on to this new place i'm going to explain that a little bit more in a moment if that's not making sense yet um and really at its absolute core, a journaling practice should feel expansive for you. It should feel good. You should feel excited to sit down somewhere with your journal and get to have this time for you. And at the end of your journaling, you should be in that place where you're like, hell yes, bring it on world. I am ready to do this because I am the woman who, and I talk about that quite a lot. Uh, we need to see ourselves as the woman who is achieving these results, living this life, making the difference, making an impact, receiving the income with ease. Because unless we see ourselves as this person, we're pushing the rock up the hill. Uh, so my own journaling journey. I'm going to share it just a little bit with you because I think that some of you will be able to really resonate with what I'm saying and, and it might create a few little ahas for you. So I was not journaling 
I'd heard about journaling, but I had resistance to it. It felt to me a lot like keeping a diary, and I am not a keeping a diary kind of a girl. Um, and I also just felt a little bit like, well, where do I even start? And then I, it actually changed when I started working with a coach. And the coach said, Claire, after our session each week, I'm giving you some journaling questions to work through. And I was like, ooh. I don't do journaling. <laughs> and then I thought, well, hang on a minute here. I have invested a lot of money to have this coach. Surely I'm going to play all out. Surely I'm going to do all the things that she says I should do and trust that I can get this result at the end. So that's what I did. I went all in. And I started to realize that actually this journaling malarkey is quite interesting. When I actually put some time aside to go a bit deeper with it, I started to have some little aha moments. I started to, my awareness started to expand. And most importantly, I realized that if I was waking up in the morning feeling not in a very brilliant place, by using journaling questions, I could actually shift the way that I was feeling so I was ready to work. Because one of the problems I used to really struggle with back then was getting focused to work. At the time, my three children were all quite young, my house was always a mess, I was working from home, you know, I would drop off children at school or my daughter at nursery, I would know that I only had a really small period of time to get this work done, but yet I would walk in the front door and I would feel scattered. And instead of sitting down at my desk and going like, All right, let's do this, what do I need to do today to grow my business, what are the activities, what's this, I would instead be like, I'll just stack the dishwasher, I'll just do this, I'll just clean up here. And then before I knew it, I had like half an hour left before picking my daughter up from nursery because she would just be in a couple of mornings a week at that point. And I'd be like, I've just wasted my opportunity to sit down and do some real work. And so I decided and realized that I needed to, to build in a mindset routine to get me into the right place so I was ready to work so that I could let go of the mum identity and step into the coach identity. And that's key, right? Because when we're in that place where we're still wearing like our mum hat or our carer hat or our whatever hat it might be that you find yourself wearing day after day after day. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, I'm laughing at the comments. Um, if, if whatever hat you find yourself wearing day after day, you it's, you need to shift that. You need to be able to step into a different part of yourself in order to then be the person who takes that action. So I had to learn myself how to take off my mum hat, put on my coach hat, so I was actually ready to go. So I was focused. So I was like, yes, I'm ready. I'm rocking. I can do this. And so for me, journaling became that thing. Journaling became that tool. It was the thing that transitioned me from mummy mode into coach mode. So I would take my kids to school, I'd drop my daughter off, I'd come home, I would go, no, I am not looking at the chaos in this house. I would sit down at my desk, move things around so I had my little space, and I'd be like, right, journaling for today. And in that journaling for today, I'm gonna, I'm, in a moment, I'm gonna take you through exactly how. Uh, but I would use that journaling time, and it might only have been five minutes, right? But that would shift my energy. That would shift my focus. And instead of me thinking about, oh, I've got this big to-do list and I need to make a doctor's appointment and a this and a this, I would instead be like, all right, what's my focus in my business? What's my non-negotiable action? What's the difference that I'm making today? Who's the woman I'm choosing to be? What's a non-negotiable about this for me? And at the time, actually, my life, our life as a family was quite difficult. We'd been some, through some huge changes and it was really important that my business started to grow and I actually started making the income that we needed. And so I realized that, okay, I've got to do this. No more excuses. And I think when it comes to journaling, if you're struggling with making it a priority, it's because you're not seeing the difference it can make in the results that you're getting. And that might be because you haven't been using it in a way that works for you. It might be because you haven't even thought about the fact that this kind of pit idea that I've mentioned briefly, um, or it might just be that you haven't actually focused in on the possibility that you're creating when you're journal. So first and foremost, you've got to decide on your why for journaling, and you've got to believe the possibility that journaling holds to shift you from this state over here to this state over here. And if you, when I say state, I mean, what you're thinking, how you're feeling, what you're focusing on.
right? So when you're in mummy mode, you're thinking about the to-do list, what the kid's doing, what all those things that need to be done in a day, probably putting everyone else's needs before your own. We use that journaling as a tool to shift your focus, shift your thoughts, shift your thinking from that into the identity you need to be in, the actual woman on the rise, right? The woman who is building this business who can step into her CEO role and be like, yes, we are doing this, that instead is going, right, I am on a mission. I am changing our world. I am creating an impact. I am receiving with more ease. I am building this business a big time. I am really doing this and being 100% committed. And if you can see that journaling has the potential to do that, that it will transform how you feel on a daily basis. And once you transform how you feel on a daily basis, the results, your life that you're experiencing transforms along with it because this is where I might lose a few of you, but don't worry, like stick with me. Uh, we create our reality from the inside out. It is our beliefs, it is our thoughts, it is our focus that ultimately determines what we're experiencing and the life that we are living. If we believe that life is in scarcity and hard and struggle and we can't trust anyone and all like the glass half empty that I was talking about, if we believe that, then we will experience that. If we truly believe we have to work really, really hard to build a business, then guess what? You will have to work really, really hard to build a business. If you believe that building a business is going to cost you something in some Way, cost you your freedom or your uh, whatever else it might be, then guess what? It will. However, if you can start changing those beliefs and instead start believing that actually the more fun you have, the more money you make, that building your business can be fun and beautiful, that actually the more you, you give yourself permission to be, the more your, your soul clients um, are attracted to you, that actually the more money you make, the more money you make, the better it gets, the better it gets. As soon as you start shifting into that place, and really having those beliefs, not from a, like, I'm going to pretend I do, but from a really starting to believe that, then that's the reality you'll experience. And you'll see the money come in, the clients come in. You'll probably work a quarter of the time that you were working over there, right? And so I, I know that it can be hard to imagine because I know that if you're in a place of struggle right now, it's easy to look at it and be like, I am not choosing this struggle. What are you talking about? But here's the thing. It's all about what's happening in our subconscious minds, our, our unconscious. These are the things that we are not aware of because, of course, if you were aware of them, you would change it. Like, we're not idiots, right? It's like, well, of course. Um, of course I would say yes to this and no to this. It's just not that simple, though. We need to start shifting our beliefs at a core level. And regular journal journaling will do that. One-off journaling might give you a little spark of inspiration, shift a little bit here, do a little bit of magic over there. But really, if we are literally rewriting your beliefs, we are literally recoding your identity. That's going to take a little bit of time and that's going to take a daily journaling practice because every single day we want to shift that dial from the old you to the new you, the old beliefs to the new beliefs, a bit more, 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 right? So that most of the time, over 50% of the time, you're in your new self rather than in your old self. Is this making sense? What questions have you got? I'm going to have a quick look at the comments that have been coming through. Uh, okay. And I'll take a breath. Breathe. I know I talk really, really quickly. I get on a bit of a roll and I'm like... So, <laughs> so bear with me. Uh, but that's me being me. I 100% know that you can keep up. Uh, Tammy, I still find myself seeing the glass half empty, but I, but I find since I've been in your academy, I catch myself and turn it around. Boom, Tammy. And that's what it's about, right? Not putting pressure on yourself to be perfect. None of us are perfect. Do we even want to be perfect? I don't think so. But noticing choosing different, moving forwards, and actually then congratulating yourself for doing it. Like, hell yeah, I did it. Um, so that's awesome. Um, Janine, have I got a camera in your house? That's funny. That's what I was laughing at earlier. Um, you can relate to this. Is it? Is it dupe? Dupe? How do I pronounce your name? So I don't want to mess it up every single time. Beautiful. Um, and I'm glad you can relate to it. Sally, totally relate. Um, Tara, how old was my daughter when she started going to nursery a few mornings a week? I'm starting a business with young children too. This is why I love following you because I know you did it with children too. My daughter was, 
she was at the crawling around stage so she she was actively moving <laughs> um and i it was probably when she was about eight months old that i really that i realized i really needed to start growing my business so until then i'd still i had been doing little things we also it was when she was little it was when she was about four months old that we actually moved from new zealand to england so there was a huge shift in that because i'd had a business in new zealand and i had to start again basically in england so there was there was lots going on in our lives um but really i think it's about however old your children are it's about how you feel and honoring how you feel and honoring that vision that you have for yourself and one of the biggest things i've learned on this journey is the belief that when i do what's best for me it's automatically best for everyone around me right when i do the thing that's best for me when i honor my own needs i'm also doing the best thing for everyone around me and that might not mean by the way that everyone is happy around you people might be like no i don't like that no i don't like that but you don't know the journey that their life needs to go on maybe it's when you say yes to you that they then have to do something different that is absolutely best for them so that's a little little thing for you to play with that I found really helpful that took away some of that mummy guilt that I had. And actually, I, I believe that belief 100% now. Um, Shara, I know the importance of journaling. You want to do it. I want to do it to just need to make time to get it done. So yeah, again, here's the thing around time. It's really easy to... Uh, I say this show, but I know that you actually do a huge amount with your time. Um, it's really easy to get caught into the I don't have enough time box. I would love to do this, but I don't have time. I would love to do this, but I don't have time. The thing that really dictates what we do with our time and what we don't actually manage to do with our time is how much of a priority it is for us. So if journaling feels like something on the to-do list, something like, oh, I feel like I should, should, it's probably never going to happen. Journaling is only going to happen as a daily practice when it's up there near the top because you go, hell yes, I like hitting these goals in my business, me doing this, like really doing this is a non-negotiable and journaling is a key tool to achieving that. And I think that's when it starts to shift. I remember someone saying to me years ago, Claire, the inner work is the work. I used to think, oh, well, I need to do the external things. I need to build a mailing list, put out that message, do this thing, do that thing. And so the personal development part of it, I would put on the back burner. That was a bit that didn't get done when I didn't have enough time. And someone said to me, Claire, the inner work is the work. And at first I was like, no, uh, <laughs> I, I rebelled against that for a while. And then actually as my life started to change, I started to realize that the inner work is the real work. And when we realize that the inner work is the real work, then we make that a priority. And then instead of getting those like little shift results, like a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, then we start getting those exponential results where we see ourselves leap forwards um and that's exciting and it's and it's only the inner work that truly allows that yes you have to take outside action so this is not like from the perspective of the secret where we just wish it imagine it sit back and dream it and nothing happens no because when we shift our inner identity we get rid of the blocks we change our identity we really step into our true selves and of course we take the aligned action from that place Whew, take another breath. Tara, when I find myself scrolling social media, that would be my trigger to stop, absolutely, and go journaling instead. Uh, so here's what I would do. Build journaling into a routine that you currently have. It's much easier to chain routines than to start a new one. So think about something you already do. So for me, I take the kids to school in the morning, I make myself a nice cup of coffee, and then I start work. So I journaling, I just add a chain link. Uh, that's what I did do. I mean, it's already there now. But so now it's, I take the kids to school, I make myself a coffee, I journal because that's the chain link that I put in. So link it to something you're already doing so that it just naturally becomes part of that routine. Uh, Amber, you 1000% agree. Awesome. Um, <laughs> The more authentically me I became, the more soul clients I'm attracting. I had to journal to find out who I was instead of the labels I'd put on myself. Absolutely. And this is and this is part of the key to journaling, right? It is about realizing how you see yourself and then realizing that, hang on, you are so much more than that. 
you're holding yourself back because you don't believe it though and we start to shift that so this this was something that I wrote down a while ago and I was like yes this this is so true journaling allows you to access a heightened sense of possibility and bit by bit change your perception beliefs and identity until you start to actually see that possibility for real in your life day by day so journaling allows you to access a heightened sense of possibility it takes you from a this is all that's available to me to a this is available to me it gets rid of those blocks it breaks down those boundaries it calls out those lies that are keeping you in the place where you currently are and allows you to step into the life that you truly want okay so two key focuses to journaling okay two key focuses and i will purposefully use my journaling in one way or the other the truth is the first way always leads to the second way anyway but sometimes you might not need to do the first way. You might just lead straight into the second. So those two ways are, number one, releasing the old, and number two, stepping into the new. So the first focus, or the first focus for your journaling can be to release the old. What I mean by that is the emotions that are coming up for you. So I used to struggle with anxiety quite a lot. Um, I used to be the person who would wake up four o'clock in the morning that feeling in my stomach, everything churning, worrying in my head, like what, what's going to happen, what's the... Um, and I realised, hold on, let me have a quick sip of my water. And I realised that that wasn't the place that I wanted to take action from, because from that place, I was taking action from scarcity, I wasn't seeing the possibility, I wasn't doing anything else. Not only that though, but we all have days, right? We all have days where something happens to us, someone bangs into our car, we get up late, we have PMT, we have like whatever. So the first way of journaling is to release the old, and by that I mean release any of the negative emotions that you're feeling because of events that have happened, so that you can let go of that to step into the way that you want to feel. And there's a couple of ways to do that. So the first is just like longhand journaling. It's just that free journaling, okay? And free journaling is basically you just writing out whatever is going on in your head. It's basically a brain dump. Free journaling is a brain dump. It's a way of going, my head is full, I'm not feeling great, splat it all out on paper instead, right? So it's pretty simple. But most people can find it a little bit hard where to start. And this is how I used to start. My brain dumps uh, in terms of getting just everything out of my head would start with, I don't really know what I need to say. I feel like I'm journaling because I should be journaling uh, and I want to empty my head, but I'm not quite sure what's coming up. Okay, so maybe the first thing that's coming up is, so I would have to like lead myself on this journey. I couldn't always just sit down and be like, boom. Um, so it's okay to lead yourself. It's okay for your journaling to start with, I don't quite know what I'm gonna say today, or I'm just feeling a little bit like this, and then allowing it to continue. So that's the first way. It's that brain dump, it's that free, um, kind of free flow journaling, just to get everything out in terms of what you're feeling, because just by getting the stuff down on paper and out of your head, it can create space. So that's way number one. Uh, way two for releasing the old is noticing, um, noticing the specific, um, emotions that you're feeling. So let's say I was feeling really angry and annoyed about something and I could feel all that anger bubbling up inside of me and I knew it was stopping me from really being focused to get on with my work that day and to get on with whatever I wanted to do. I would then actually journal to that emotion. Dear anger, why are you popping up today? Like sometimes it's really obvious why that anger is there, right? And we just need to work through a process to allow ourselves to release it. But sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we can just be feeling really angry and really like, Ugh, and have no idea why. And so I quite often find that by journaling to that emotion, dear anger, dear, um, uh, dear anxiety, dear whatever it might be, what's coming up, that gives me an in to starting to figure out what's happening. And when, I'm just trying to find a piece of paper so I can show you this. Uh, I've got a million pieces of paper, but oh, there we go. Um, what we want to be doing, I was talking about this pitch, right? I want you to think of it as like this muddy 
muddy pit full of emotions, right? We go in our pit one end, and this is where we go down into our emotion. These are all our emotions here, and we explore. We're a bit like, okay, what's going on here, and what am I feeling there, and why is that coming up? And when journaling, when when you stop your journaling down here, you're potentially feeling limited all day. You're not shifting to that feel good place that we talked about. So we, at the end of this, must come out of the pit. And the way that we come out of the pit is that we create a bridge. So we then bridge from our first way of journaling into our second way of journaling. And the way that we bridge it is we start looking at the possibility. We start choosing something different. So maybe we've been journaling to anger and anger said, oh, I'm feeling so annoyed right now because I feel like no one cares about me. I feel like I'm doing all the work and I get no thanks. And like, that's something I used to feel all the time. Like I was a person doing it all and no one would stop and say, thank you, Claire. Um, and so I would get annoyed about that. Um, and so I would, so let's say I was journaling on that and I'd be like, okay, like I'm feeling annoyed. I feel like no one's acknowledging me. Um, and then my bridge would be, how would I like to feel instead? What can I actually do about this anger? How can I let people know that I'm feeling a little bit this way? How can I acknowledge myself? And so I would use this bridge to start get to start pulling myself up, the, sorry, the other side of this pit. What would I like my focus be today? As I step into my work, what are the things I need to remind myself of? What am I forgetting about the possibility of life, the possibility of my business? How do I want to show up? Who is the woman that I really am when I don't have this baggage holding me down? What do I need to give myself permission to do to really step into that version of me today? Can you see? So, so when we do that, we come out of the pit, we finish our journaling and we go, boom, I am ready world, bring it on. But if we stop when we're down in the bottom of the pit, we go, oh, I'm still in, spilling in all this emotion and, and your focus is the emotion and the things that are happening rather than what you were wanting to create. Is this making sense? Have you got any questions so far? Um, Shara, it makes so much sense, light bulb moment, awesome. Tara, oh my God, amazing advice, honor myself and it will trickle out to my family eventually, absolutely. Uh, Caroline, is there a way to find the discipline to do journaling? I'm a write things down girl, but I don't do it regularly and find myself sitting there with pen and paper and write nothing. So I think I probably covered that in terms of you just, you start with the, like I, exactly what you're saying, like I'm finding it really hard to write something right now. I feel like I just want to do this and, and see where that leads you. Um, tell me, uh, if you're putting, if you're putting what you need first, your kids will be happy. If you're happy, they'll be more settled. Exactly. Boom. Um, oh, I must be quite a bit back actually with the, with these. I've just realized. Uh, okay. Uh, do I ask myself questions when I journal? Yes. I'm going to talk to you about that in a moment. Uh, hi, Risha. Um, okay. Some awesome things. Yes. So relatable, making sense. Perfect. So now is a perfect time. Oh, hang on, hang on. We don't want to leave this page. Oh, nearly press the press the button. I nearly lost you all. Okay, so so that's our first form of journaling. You journal to get rid of the negative emotions that you're feeling or thinking about, and you use it to explore it a little bit because we don't want to just pretend those emotions aren't there. The more we just push those emotions away and pretend they're fine the bigger they can get, right? So we do want to explore it. We do want to expand our awareness about it, but then we want to lift ourselves out of it. We don't want to stay in that place. So we use that bridge. We use those questions to take ourselves to that better place, that place of possibility. First way of journaling. Second way of journaling is really embracing that possibility. Second way of journaling is dream stretching. What is dream stretching? Dream stretching is making that vision you have for yourself, for your life, even bigger. It's really pushing yourself to think as big as possible. Because here's the thing, right? Let's say, let's say you are this. You know, sometimes weird like analogies come to my mind. I don't, I don't know why this one's come up, but we'll go with it. Let's say you're playing basketball, right? <laughs> Why would any of you be playing basketball? I don't know. I don't play basketball, but let's go with it. So let's say you're playing basketball and you've got this ball and you're throwing it up and you're throwing it up as high as you can. Again, you probably don't do that in basketball. We won't worry too much about the details. So you're throwing it up as high as you can. But let's say the room that you're in has a, a ceiling at six foot, right? So you throw it up and, it, and you throw it as high as you can and it either just doesn't quite touch the roof or it bounces on the roof and bounces back down again. Like you hit that ceiling, right? If you're only dreaming, 
to six foot tall, that's as far as you can get. You can't bounce any further, right? And that will limit sometimes because you won't want to keep hitting the ceiling. So you won't throw the ball that hard. So you'll throw it less hard than it needs to be than you could potentially because you don't want to keep hitting the ceiling. Let's say you, you then expanded that ceiling. So it wasn't six foot, it was eight foot. Now you know you've got more space. Now you can achieve something so much more. Now you really can throw that ball with everything that you've got, not worrying about it hitting the ceiling and causing problems. And so you, you literally, boom, it goes. And it might be that it's this much difference but you've expanded your, your sense of possibility. And that's what happens with dream stretching. When you take that ceiling and you make it even higher, it means you give yourself the permission to, to go more at the thing that you do believe. Does this make sense? Um, as I said, it's a bit of a weird analogy. So what we need to do is we always wanna be dream stretching. We wanna be, and, and this is what you can, this is one of the things you can be doing in your journaling, dream stretching. What is the biggest vision that you can create for yourself that truly lights you up? Little side note here, by the way, because when I used to do this, I, to begin with, fell into a bit of a trap around it. I used to think, oh, well, what's the biggest thing I could imagine spending money on? Like, instead of a five bedroom house, I'll have a 10 bedroom house. Instead of one car, I'll have three cars. Mm, Cause that didn't actually light me up. The things that light me up are travel and times with my children and exploring new places and expansiveness and freedom and all of that, right? So my big dream needs to ha have this huge freedom. Um, I also like a, bit, like a bit of luxury. So traveling in luxury, having that freedom, all of those things, that feels good to me. Knowing I'm making a difference, that's a huge one of my values. So part of that vision is standing on stages in front of thousands and thousands of children, children, <laughs> people, actually helping them, sharing my own journey and, and all of that. So, so raise your ceiling, dream big, use your journaling to explore that. Like how big can I dream today? What else is possible for me? What else lights me up? What makes me feel expanded? What, um, if I knew what my calling was in life, what would it be? If I could step into my purpose, what would that look like? What is a life that I believe is waiting for me? Um, and I just need to shift into that version of me and let go of any of the baggage. So it really is about dream stretching. Um, and it's also about shifting into the identity. So this is where we start changing the beliefs. So if you have beliefs around, I have to work hard in order to receive more, instead we create beliefs around the more fun I have, the more money I make. And so it's kind of affirmations, but you're not doing them as affirmations, like you're you just create, like you're writing out what's coming to you. So like, I am the woman who can achieve this. And again, little side note, if you struggle with the I am this already, you might need another one of those little bridges that we talked about. And your bridge is I am becoming, or I am stepping more and more into. One of the ways that I would do it is every day in every way, I am becoming more, mm. like every day in every way, I'm receiving more income. Every day in every way, I am giving more value. Every day in every way, I am becoming the woman who. Every day in every way, I'm be being an even better mom as I build this business. So I would have things like that that would really work for me. Um, okay, I'm just having a look because I did make a few notes. I feel like I've talked about all the things already. We've been, oh my goodness, we've been on for 45 minutes. That's quite a long time. So what else do I need to share? Talked about freehand journaling, talked about the bridging, um, talked about the dream stretching. Oh, and the other two. So the other two little things around that are the what if. What if, that's another magic statement when it comes to journaling. What if, what if I could double my income and work half the time? What if I could become famous for the thing that I love to do? What if I could like be a six figure, a seven figure businesswoman who makes this beautiful impact in the world? What if I could? And so play into the like, what if I could? Because that's, it, it might not be fully shifting you in there, but it's nudging you, nudging you, nudging you, nudging you, nudging you. And every little nudge in the right direction is a nudge that counts. And then the other one that I love is, 
of course, and I, I, I love my little of course statements like, of course I'm a woman on the rise, of course I'm a seven figure coach, of course I do this and I do this and I do this and I do this, like of course my life is filled with fun and freedom and possibility, of course I get to do whatever I want whenever I want to, of course my clients have incredible experiences when they work with me, of course my clients are creating epic results in their businesses, of course, of course, of course, and I just love that because it feels really light and energy to me, it feels light, it feels exciting. So what I've done with you today so far is obviously we've talked about the mistakes people make when journaling, how to make it a priority, we've talked about the different types of journaling, um, what else do I want to share with you? I know, the other thing I want to share with you is journaling doesn't need to be written, right? We do not need to put ourselves in a box when it comes to our journaling, find a way to journal that works for you and I have journaled in different ways. So. You can journal longhand, you can journal bullet points, you can journal on audio messages to yourself, you can video journal to yourself. I actually used to do this. I used to do a little video journal to myself every day. I have a bath every day. I like I love I love water and scents and bubbles and like I've got, you know, like I'm Pisces, so maybe that's why. Um so I have a bath every single night. And one of the things I did for a short period of time, I'm not actually doing it anymore now, but I would do a video journal to myself in the bath every night, boom, it was like magic. Um, it worked really well for me. So give yourself permission to play with your journaling and find a way that really works for you, as opposed to thinking, no, journaling should be this. Journaling should be this. Journaling can be anything you want it to be. And the core thing about it, the real thing about it is, does it expand your possibility? Does it step you into that next level version of you? Does it help you let go of the old beliefs and really embrace the new beliefs? Because if it does that, it's working. That's what it's all about, okay? So give yourself permission to journal in a way that works for you. And yes, to that question earlier about journaling questions, I do have journaling questions that I use, M much less so now because I'm so used to it that I quite often write my own question and then answer it. So um, like, what do I want to focus on today? Or if uh, by stepping into being this version of me, what do I need to um, focus on? Or what are my next level beliefs? What is this reality I'm creating? How am I stepping into like a fuller version of myself? How am I staying in gratitude right now? Um, I might ask myself those questions and then journal on it. And on that note, I have got a PDF with lots of journaling questions on it for you. So some of you will already have had that um, from me. At some point, you might have signed up and got that PDF. If you haven't got that PDF, in the comments, type uh, journaling PDF, please. And I will make sure that I either link it in there or I send it to you so that you can all actually get those journaling questions. So it was I think it was 61 journaling questions. You don't need to do all 61 questions. The way that it works is you pick one question. You don't want to have a load of questions that you're doing. Journaling shouldn't be a half an hour job, by the way. It could be as little as a two minute thing. Two minutes, sit down, sort out your focus, get on with your work. But from that place of being excited, expansive, and your focus being on the possibility, not on the struggle. So, um, give me a little yes I'd like the journaling PDF and you can get those questions and then literally just pick one by the time you get to the end of that PDF you'll be so tuned into those journaling questions it will roll off your tongue or your hand or whatever and you'll find it really really easy okay so I think I've shared everything that I need to um questions pop in the PDF please if you'd like it and question time. Let's do a couple of questions um, and then I'll let you go about your day and hopefully begin your own awesome journaling practice. So the last little things I want to share about. One, make it a priority. We've talked about how you do that. Two, make it work for you. We've talked about different ways that you can journal. Find a way, play with it, experiment with it, make it work for you. Number three, Always lift yourself up after you journal. If you're journaling about emotions, out of the pit at the end so that you're feeling fantastic as you go about your day. Um, number four, use those bridging statements to shift you, whether it's to get you out of the pit or whether it's to bridge that where you're feeling now to where you want to be. I am becoming. Every day in every way I am stepping into this more. I am growing into. I am starting to believe. They're your, they're your um, bridging statements. Okay, let me have a quick look. 
Bum, ba, dum, ba, ba. I talk to myself as I'm walking. Awesome, Kate. That's definitely helpful. Um, I do that quite a lot too. Uh, your legs are part of that. So, right, Sarah, you can watch it back on replay. I always have that I should be. It's almost like I know what I want but can't. Can't. I'm not sure what the last word is, Arisha. So, if you still feel like you've got an I should around journaling, this is what I want you, I want you to go and journal about it. I want you to ask yourself, you don't have to journal about it, I'm joking. I want you to ask yourself, what is this should? What is this should? Is this just ego trying to keep me small because my ego recognizes that, aha, if I start doing this journaling malarkey, it's gonna be getting a lot quieter. I'm gonna be listening to my higher self much more. You know, I quite often think about two little mini-me's on my shoulder, like my ego mini-me that says, but this is scary and you're not ready and you're not good enough and you're da -da. And then my higher self that's like, hell yes, girl, we can do this, you are an idiot. Um, <laughs> don't know when I became American. Um, and I always think, you know, it's that whole like story, feed the wolf, um, which, is, which is the little persona you want to feed. In journaling, you're feeding that future self more and more and more. Your ego might well kick off and it might well tell you a great story about how it's not aligned for you and you don't have time and uh, it's a should, not a real desire. So just give yourself permission to explore it, play with it. You could journal, you could just think it through your head and play, speak it out loud, talk to someone about it um, and, and, and just really check in because I think that when you find a way of journaling for you, it isn't a should. And when you tap into what you can achieve by utilizing this tool, it doesn't become a should. It's a little bit like if you decide to build a house and you go, you know what? We, we're not gonna use any tools to build this house. We're gonna do it all by hand and like, you know, use my fingers to build the whole entire house versus hang on a minute, here's a hammer and a whatever it's going to make the job a lot easier so it's a little bit like if you're building this business do you really want to do it with your bare hands or do you want to use some tools that can help you and make it a much easier job um joe hi joe i find myself always saying i know i'm getting ahead of myself but uh, before i say something that i'm dreaming big about my husband is supportive but say just concentrate on one thing first and i, I think that's the thing um gary v talks about the clouds and the dirt right and it's about holding both what's my dream what like the, the clouds are the dream the vision the this is what i'm doing and the dirt is that this is the next step and it's about holding both because if, if you're just doing the next steps that's busy work, that's being on a hamster wheel, that feels like you're doing, 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 doing. Why? You need to hold that vision because that's the thing that pulls you forward and gives you that momentum. So definitely let go of the, I know I'm getting ahead of myself. No, not at all. Uh, like I'm starting to own myself and this is my dream and this is the next step. Uh, I'm loving, you're loving my energy. Thank you, Tammy. Okay, I think I've seen all of those comments. I can see lots of you want the journaling, so I will get that sorted. Ginny, I think you probably do, but I will share it again. Um, Caroline, hmm, journaling whilst playing basketball. <laughs> I need to exercise, so this could be a winner. That's funny. Um, okay, right. Mwah. Sending lots of love. Thank you for being here. I hope that even if you just take one thing away from today, right? We've I've actually talked through a whole host of things. It might even be worth you sitting down and, and making a few notes. But even if you just take one thing away, in fact, share with me. I'd love to hear what's one thing you can take away from everything that we've talked about today to really utilize this tool so that it helps you get the results that you want and feel fantastic in the process because it's all about the journey. It shouldn't feel like a struggle. We wanna shift into that place where it's fun and it's expansive and it's joyful and we get to be all of ourselves as we're achieving the results that we desire. Um, fabulous as ever, thank you Janine, gorgeous. Um, Glenny, I wonder if it's about potential, uh, then it, uh, I wonder if it's about potential, then it is using your imagination to see what you want and where you want to be rather than staying in reality. Yet yeah, here's the thing about that, I'm really glad you put that, uh, Glenny. Um, I mean, we're quite, taught, like as we grow up as kids, with these huge imaginations. We're taught that imagination is a make-believe world. It is not. Imagination is our internal reality that impacts our external reality. The fact that you can create that possibility, that picture, that idea in your mind 
means it's available to you in some way. Okay, so yes, let let set your imagination free. Stop looking at the, but this is what's real right now, because if you live from that place, from that this world is just material and this is how things are, then that is how things will be. If you shift into that place of, like, actually everything is energy, everything changes, where I put my focus makes a huge difference, how I feel makes a huge difference, I am the creator of my reality, it is a game changer, you will start seeing a whole different reality. Um, Okay, uh, we've got some thank yous, thank you, time to get on with it, uh, the of course affirmations, you love that, fantastic Kate, right, Mwah. sending lots of love, go be awesome, I will see you next, no not next week, the week after, remember we are running the uh, how to build your own profitable challenge, uh, and we're doing that as a whole week's training. It's going to be absolutely flipping amazing. So if you haven't signed up for that yet, make sure that you do. That begins, I think it's Monday, the 5th of October. It's going to be awesome. Um, I'm already putting together the trainings and things for you for that. And um, yeah, I know you're going to absolutely love it. Go and have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.